right what's going on circle of the rainbow warriors uh today we have a very special day a very special day and i don't say that lightly because you know me right and you know that i don't normally just invite random people that i don't know that i don't admire in one way shape or form and that doesn't have something to add into my life and your you guys's life and and I, i've known this person for quite a while now quite a while i remember the first time i met him and one event with my brother brian shout out to brian and god damn i've watched uh his evolution and i mean again i don't say it lightly but fucking proud f f fucking proud of this person he's part of the rainbow warriors as well and uh i think he has a lot to offer a lot to offer based on his experiences and i think he has more to offer than than he's aware of <laughs> so that's why i wanted to give him the 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 spot just today he's going to be about him and whatever he wants to talk about and this is going to be really really good so pay a lot of attention because this is some real shit this is not some cookie cutter stuff like oh you know you have to be yourself no 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 this is some real raw shit real transformation that i saw it and i continue to see it so i think that's pretty fucking inspiring to me as an individual and to anybody who knows this person or just sees the transformation because you can go to to his uh, accounts his, um social media and you see the you'll see the fucking evolution right there so without any further ado let me introduce my brother david what's going on man what's going on can't hear you man you're muted you're muted thank you, you for go. having me here pablo <laughs> yeah, i really appreciate it now I'll, i'll make sure to drop some bombs and like you mentioned when you first met me i felt like i was a robot it's, yeah I, i know you see i was i was i was, I was different man. i was stiff i was very um rigid that's the only way i know how to explain it and i know you saw me at brian's office when i was making calls and shit and role playing yeah. you know even i felt it i just felt fucking depressed like my my mood and energy was very dense and solid uh so i have i have made a lot of changes since then i want to share a little bit about what i again it's not cookie cutter there's no step system yeah. but there's some things i've done that help me make those steps that i can articulate in a simple format for y'all yeah yeah because you know man and you can actually talk about i mean you can talk about whatever the fuck you want right because this is your space but right. uh yeah the first time i saw you man and you you've you've paid your dues and you continue to pay your dues right i remember we had some pretty fucking intimate moments you and i right. within the the seminars right i remember a couple of them the last one that we did And you know, you went, to, you and I went to the forest, and we had a, those moments where, damn, you you actually, how how would you put it? You destroyed yourself to rebuild yourself from from truth, right? Based from truth, and I think that's something that maybe you can start talking about that. How you paid your dues? How you began saying, you know what? I wanna. I don't know how I'm going to fucking do it, but I'm going to pay these motherfucker. Or I'm going to show up to this place and I'm just going to fucking do it. And, and, and we'll, and we'll see, maybe you can share some of the, I mean, depending on whether you want to share it with us or not, right. uh, some part of your story. Because I remember you mentioned with me that how you were brought up, you were very insecure. You were, you thought that you, you were not, you know, because how people, they yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't want to mention too much. It's, it's up to it's you. Cool. Man. You, can, you know, so, growing up, Like you said, I was very insecure. And it's mainly because I bought into people's idea of what they thought I was or a little mistake I've made. And someone might have said, hey, bro, you're fucking stupid or some shit. And that that set a big foundation. I remember the first event you had was, you know, I, I remember I, I, I told both you guys, you and Brian, you know, that was one of my biggest insecurities that I thought I was fucking stupid. I remember tearing up because, you know, I heard the, you know, you guys obviously saw something different. And now I realize that, like, you know what? I am pretty fucking intelligent. I just, I bought in this false idea that even if I wasn't, it, it would be irrelevant. There's no set definition for what stupid is. But in terms of paying dues, uh, yeah, I paid a lot, man. I mean, literally in money, time, effort, failure, a lot of shit. Uh, but when I first got into real estate, you know, that's when I really started paying my dues initially. 
I did, I, I did start doing real estate for the money. Absolutely. But I did learn a lot of beneficial things from real estate, uh, men, mainly in self-evolution and humbling myself to be at a level of a student. Because I always came from a position of I'm better than, because I always felt like I had to defend a position of, well, I'm stupid and I want people to know it. So I have to portray an image that is better than. Um, but yeah, I paid a lot of dues, man. I paid for a lot of coaches. Um, but the biggest dues I would pay in terms of like what sparked evolution are things like hot yoga, breathing, working out. Right now I'm doing jujitsu and putting myself in very difficult positions and to positions where I will fail. You know, for me, it might be going to a Toastmasters meeting and fucking blowing it because I didn't prepare a speech. But fuck, I, I learned something. I paid a price by not preparing for it. So I can't simplify that answer. I paid in so many areas of my life. When I get a massage, I pay top dollar, $150 for 90 minutes. When I get a haircut, I pay $60. I pay for coaching with you. I paid coaching with Brian. I paid coaching with Kevin Ward. I pay my fucking jujitsu coach $110 an hour just because I want their time. I want their experience. I want their knowledge um, because that's just a reflection of how I see myself. Cause I know I'm worth that much. You know what I mean? Um, so I, in terms of investing, I paid my dues, but the biggest way I, I would have paid my dues in a sense is putting myself in positions of failure and suffering. Cause then that's where you really get to make those pivotal points. When I'm meditating, for example, I've done a lot of meditations where it's just, fuck, my mind's telling me some crazy ass shit. Like, oh man, what if someone breaks in your house and stabs you right now? You need to take off these headphones and, and take off this blindfold. But <laughs> it's a crazy shit, man. I, I just keep my eyes closed and dissolving my ego and myself. And through that suffering, I reach a new level of consciousness and strength. Um, in hot yoga, for example, I'll, last week, I, I didn't drink water before the class. Stupid ass, stupid ass idea. But I went there. Didn't drink water. My back was injured. I had a tournament in two days. And I remember halfway through the class, I felt like I was going to pass out. But then I just remembered like, you know what, man, the power of the sun exists within me. There's an intelligence beating my fucking heart and I can fucking do this. And it's in those moments when your brain is telling you to stop and you have to keep going. Uh, so that's the biggest way you can pay your dues. Man, that's so true. It's in those small moments when you're about to break down and you say, no, I can't do, I can't do another push up," And you, you make that other, you, you, you force yourself to, to do that extra push up or whatever it is that you're doing. And you have a breakthrough basically, right? It's like a fucking breakthrough. And I don't know about you, but I become addicted to breakthroughs. I purposefully put myself in those situations because I feel like, oh, I, what else can I do? All right. I made this. Now, what else can I do, man? Oh, man, because that's how you keep pushing yourself and keep elevating, right? But I want to I, I ask you something, bro. You see, with people that are maybe in, in your position where you were starting or in our position when we were first starting, because you can say, well, you and I can say that we didn't, I mean, we weren't born this way, right? Like fucking warriors. We know how to defend ourselves, our families. You know, you know your shit because I've also seen your, your fashion game also. I remember even complimenting you with your fucking pink, pink blazer and, and whatever. I'm like, man, you, you got your shit. But uh, what was the first thing that got you into all of this self-improvement, you know? Because a lot of people are, like you mentioned, you know, the ego. Well, I'm better than you. Why the fuck would I pay someone or why the fuck would I go to this class? I mean, I already know everything. Right. What would you say? I mean, were you born different? Like, do, do you have a different DNA? Where you come from the fucking Anunnaki's? Or, or I might be alien, bro. You fucking never yeah, know. Yeah, we might be fucking alien. <laughs> that's for sure. But do you, what, what would you say? It's that 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 initial, you know, mindset or that initial curiosity, man. Yeah, you know, um, that's a great question, and I guess to bring it back to the shadow, I would say it actually stemmed from insecurity. It, it did stem from a level of, I'm, I'm going to show everybody who the fuck I am and I have to improve. Uh, so it didn't start from the best place. I'm not going to act like, oh, you know, I just, I just wanted to get better. No, self-improvement. It's about the self. It's a selfish act in a way, at least initially for me, my perception, probably in the root, I just wanted bitches and money. <laughs> you know, I wanted, I wanted to have a six pack 
it actually started when I, when I started working out and I started getting my first muscles and my tricep and shit. I'm like, oh, sure, I'm starting to look good. Um, I just wanted a six pack to, to you know, we got chicks. Uh, and this was like ninth, 10th grade. Uh, but from there, you know, real estate was a good example. That's when I started paying for a lot of things, coaching. Um, and I was looking into real estate investing. It, it stemmed from a place of like, everybody said I was nothing. I want to show everybody that I am. Uh, so it, it, it didn't come from the best place, but it evolved into a better state of mind. Cause now it's just, I see myself improving to the best self as an obligation, not only for myself, I love myself, but it, for now for my upcoming child, my girlfriend, my family, the world, even, because I know the world's just a reflection of my mind. Um, and it, it takes a lot of strength. And now the self-improvement is forgiving those people that said those things to me and really looking at their face and just seeing that they were hurt too in some way and they're just projecting. So it uh, didn't come from the best place. You know, the self-improvement didn't come from, from the best place. And I think people that don't pursue self-improvement didn't have that, don't have a need to prove themselves. I think having a level of pride might help you get to that point. Like if you don't value who you are, your name, your legacy, um, I can see why you might not pursue some of these things, but obviously everybody in the rainbow warriors has fucking uh, invested into things. You know, they've, they've attended these lectures and whatnot. So there's some people, nobody is fixed. Everybody could change, but there has to be, I guess like you have to be sick of who you are. Mm. And at least for me, it was fuck these people. Now it's like, all right, I got to be better for these people, but that's where it stemmed from for me. That man, that's so that's some that's some real shit. That's why I said this is gonna be real and raw. This is not fucking Anthony Robbins from yeah, you know. I mean, the guy is great, but sometimes it's just about marketing and putting it into yeah. uh, cookie cutter shit. And no, but it's so true. What you just mentioned is some some bomb ass fucking truth. It's a bomb right there. First of all, congratulations on your child. I'm I'm also gonna, gonna have a child and. I know your child is going to be really fucking proud of having a badass dad like you, man. And you're going to bring him up way better than you you were brought up. And this is what we need in the world, man. It's exactly what we need. Evolution. Continuing, continuing the, the evolution. But um, that's so true. People bullshit themselves and bullshit others by saying, well, I started at the you know self-improvement road because I wanted to become the best version of myself because... I heard a calling from the ancient gods. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, man. No, right? And you just said the truth because I started in the same fucking place. And I think everyone, each and every one of us rainbow warriors, and which is exactly why we call ourselves warriors, we can say it out loud. I started from, from a shitty position and I'm actually proud of it, baby. So what? Because from that, from being in the mud, now I, I fucking evolved. But it's so true. Uh, So would you say that, you know, people that are getting started, because you know what, maybe I'm going to, we're, we're going to publish this badass lecture into the public, not just for us, the Rainbow Warriors, because this is some, some phenomenal things that we're talking about. But for people, let's say that this is someone that is in between, a young person that doesn't know, has that, like, you know, that I hate myself, like you just mentioned. God damn, man, I fucking hate the way that I am right now. I hate the way that I look, no, no confidence, whatever. Would you say that the fuel to get you started, even if it's selfish, is something good? Because I know that a lot of people in spirituality, especially think about the Rainbow Warriors. We're spiritual warriors, right? I think they get trapped, right? They get trapped in the idea that, oh, it's not about the ego. Let the ego go. Yeah, but if I didn't have my ego beating my ass every day to be like, yeah, I want to prove you motherfuckers wrong. Because that's how I started as well. I want to prove everyone wrong. I want to prove my mom wrong. I want to prove my fucking family wrong. You motherfuckers don't know who the fuck you're dealing with. And I'm going to show you all. But that initial force is that anger. I remember I've, I've said it this in other lectures. You have to be so angry first, right? Like, but that is the first step. And then you evolve into something else. But I think people, especially now, that are too, cannot, uh, cannot come up with a better word than pussies. I don't yeah. know how to say it. I mean, they're, they're very, you know, fragile, and they're like, oh no, it's not about ego, and oh no. But then you lose that initial force. 
So would you say it's okay to be a little bit selfish at first? Or what's your thought on that, man? <laughs> Whether it's okay or not is beyond me. I don't fucking know. But that, that's what I did. You know, or at least that's what fueled me. But if somebody is lacking, I guess that pride in themselves, who they are, they dress like shit. They don't brush their fucking teeth. You know, they don't care if they perform well at something or something as small as how they clean the dishes. If they take no pride in their work, then they're not going to be fueled to do these types of things. But I, I get the, the, the modern day spiritual person. Oh, it's all about love. It's all about peace. Motherfucker, you don't lo love yourself. If not, you wouldn't be fat. You would not be fat. You would not be eating those fucking chips right now. You're fucking crazy. No. If you love, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're telling me some nonsense. So what I would recommend for that person, you know, is what I, what I did for myself. If I was coming from a very weak position, I didn't even value myself. I need to prove to myself that I can persevere through something that I have some form of value for me was ice baths. You know, I, I, would, I would recommend everybody to look up Wim Hof, see the things he's done, look at, read his book and know that this shit's possible. We have the, we have the ability to access our autonomic nervous system and connect to the power that's within all of us. The same power that fuels the sun and everything around us is within our fucking heart than our body. Um, so if you do an ice bath, I, I see a lot of people doing it for like two minutes, do it for 10 minutes with no fucking training, no training. Just get in there, get in there. And ideally with someone, you know, watching. So in case you pass out, you never know, but get in there. If you continuously continue to breathe, breathe into your stomach, up to your chest, up to your head. If you make it past those first two to five minutes, eventually your body will warm up. And through that, you'll work, you'll learn that oh shit, by just persevering, I can do anything. Because then this transfers over, at least for me, martial arts. It might transfer over for you for a sales call. You might get too nervous handling objection handlers because you don't know how to breathe. Do these things that show you I have strength within me and I can persevere. Because maybe you've never done anything monumental in life. Maybe you have, or maybe you can't remember because you experienced so much of the, of the muck. So at least start persevering and through that, you're going to start taking on bigger challenges, wow. bigger obstacles. You'll start to develop that value in yourself. Uh, for me, ice baths, it might be walking across fire. I know you're, you're talking about that in your magnetic confidence. Uh, but for me, at ice baths, it's going to give you the most instant results and your physiology is going to change. You're going to feel immense power after. Yeah, I've done the ice baths as well. And God damn, I remember the first time I did it, I wanted to die. I thought I was going to fucking die, literally. Oh, oh, man. And I would say this example that talk about being present here in the now. Everyone says that. Do a fucking ice bath and you'll realize what it is really being present because you can't think about anything else. You're just there fucking dying. And it, it's perfect, man. Why don't, you, why don't we do this, man? Uh, do you want to share a little bit more on that? Because I know I see you more, more of a... I mean, I don't want to say expert, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, as a more of a, you know your shit when, when, when it comes to breathing techniques and all this. I've done a lot of them. But even when I started, when we went to the forest, remember that? And I told you, oh, we're going to do this. And you already knew. And I think maybe you, you even know more than I do when it comes to breathing techniques. I don't know. But you're, you've, like you, you've more depth, if that makes sense, when it comes to that. Uh, or, or at least that's my perception. Right. Me. Uh, no. I wouldn't say I'm a master. Of, uh, yeah, I know. Well, no, I, I apply master, it right? regularly. I apply this shit regularly. Regularly. There you go. You have more experience than the regular guy, right? Yeah. You have more experience. So would you want to share a little bit more on that, man, when it comes to breathing techniques and how it works and what what is made for you? And, you know, maybe you know when you're very nervous, anxious, angry, even, for example, because I know that probably – the breathing techniques that you know, it's serving you right now with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right? Probably. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. Shit. That's the thing. I'm literally breathing at all times. Like, yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm not fucking always confident. You know, like I'm speaking right now in front of camera. How do I stay calm? It's for my breath. So I can share a few breathing techniques that are very simple and you can do any time. Uh, but You know, for you guys watching the recording, I just recommend doing Wim Hof, going on YouTube, do the fucking breathing exercise and do it for a week and see how you how you feel before and after. 
Yeah. Uh, but something small you can do, especially if you're under pressure, um, is just something I've learned through Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's called fogging the mirror. So you breathe into your hand as if you're fogging a mirror. Mm. Yeah. And now you do that with your nose onto your hand. Mm. You know, notice how those intrinsic muscles in your nose contract when you do this. You want to do that with your nose. Yeah. And now you're going to do that same muscular tension as you breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. Yeah. Yeah, you feel the construction of the constriction over here. Yeah. Something similar to what the Navy SEALs and the Army Rangers do is they take a deep breath and they exhale for like a minute. Like, shit. It slows down your heart rate and forces you to be present and calm. Something you can use at all times. So like if you're uh, about to give a speech or you're about to do a fight or whatever the fuck you, I don't know, you're about to make a sales call, whatever. You know, you can do this breathing technique because breathing is really everything and it controls yeah. your energy and your body. Um, for example... Like with a, you know, I know some people in the group are rainbow or, or, or real estate agents. So if you're in a sales call or you're in a presentation, your energy, they can feel it. Yeah. If you're feeling all anxious, your heart's beating incoherently, your fucking focus is everywhere. You need to bring it back to the breath and stay calm. Uh, a, a common example is like when you stand next to a horse within a hundred yards, their heart is so big and beats so coherently, but their electromagnetic field around their heart that if you stand next to them, your heart's going to start breathing ry rhythmically. You can create the same effect with people. So if you're calm, they'll be calm. In martial arts, if you're fighting, if you're calm, you scare the other person because they're anxious. Uh, but people feed off of you. They respond to who you're being. Um, one of the best ways, I know uh, people talk about changing your identity, connecting to God, all the spiritual shit. It has, like you're talking before in previous podcasts and shit, it really starts with step one. Breathe, eat good food, exercise, get some fucking sun, bro. You can't fucking meditate if you're on your phone all the fucking time eating chips. I'm sorry. But learn how to breathe. It's not going to be this fucking magnificent, multidimensional DMT trip just yet. It starts with just being calm, being in the moment. Through that, it will evolve, uh, depending on what you do, into bigger, more expansive experiences. But everything starts with the first step. Damn, that's good, man. That's good. And you, you, the effects of properly applying these breathing techniques, you feel them immediately. Immediately. Right? You don't have to be like, oh, be a master. You feel them immediately. Right. And that's, that's something at our disposal is fucking amazing. You, you mentioned the Navy SEALs and that. You you were in the Army, right? Yeah, I was in the Army. Not that I did anything fucking crazy. I, 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 you know, it's always been in me to be a fucking warrior. I love fighting. Granted, Dude. I don't like hurting people. I, I thought about shooting. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't go to war. I'm glad I didn't do anything like that. But I love the lifestyle of, I guess, being a warrior, being a monk, yeah. and really being disciplined. Because it gives you a lot of freedom. Um, but yeah, in those type of situations, when you're doing drills, you have to, you have to be very calm. You have to breathe. Um, and especially if you're a very physical person, I, I want to bring up true nature, your true nature after this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I was in the army right? there's nothing else to say to it. You know, it's the dedication that you admire. I, I love being a warrior. I consider myself a warrior because I love the dedication, the, the consistency, the you know, showing up and basically putting your your mouth where your money is or what's the fucking word i don't know how to say it man put your money where your mouth is there you go <laughs> <laughs> it's a spanish it's fucking mexican goddamn but yeah i love that you know you walk or talk otherwise you get killed or otherwise you get knocked the fuck out something like right. that so i think that's amazing and i think all of these things that you that you've experienced man because i want to bring it up a little a, a notch you know i want to i want to talk about something more deep that you know of Uh, all these experiences, they've led you and they've, they've, it's, uh, they've given you the whole experience and who you are right now. And I think 
you have the tools to be able to help a lot of people around you, man. I know that you've helped, your, you've helped yourself individually because that's how you start. You just said it. Start, step number one, fucking meditate, eat right. You know, you have, you have to start at point one, then two, then three, then four. So individually, you've worked upon yourself. You eat healthy. You have a good fucking body, good physique. You're healthy as shit, right? And you know what you're doing. You continually push yourself to the limits. So I think that's great. But now let's talk a little bit more about spirituality. Because I think you've done a lot of experiences, right? DMT, this, that. I know that you told me. I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. Anything. Anything you'll have no filter. Oh, it's, this is your time, man. Because uh, I know maybe you mentioned like, you know, I did it because I just wanted to feel what it was like. But I know that now with your maturity and your new mindset and, you know, this new version of you, this better version of you, right? I think you now maybe are extracting some of that knowledge that you learned from those experiences that you were like oh, a different dimension, literally. And I, I see you. That's why when I first talked to you, and especially when we went into the forest, I told you, man, you, you're, you're made out of something different. <laughs> you know, I don't see this in, in, in anybody, in, in, in random people. You know, I, I don't see this very often. That's what I'm trying to say. So I think those experiences also, maybe at that time, you were like, oh, I didn't learn shit. Right. Well, I just did it and that's it. But would you say that you can take some, did you learn something from, from that, that now you're applying sure. or something like that? Yeah. Go For ahead. sure. I've learned a lot from a lot of different experiences. Uh, my most recent one, which wasn't too long ago, was on mushrooms. Uh, but I'll start from the beginning. When I started, what was the inclination that even led me to these psychedelics? You know, at least for me, and I think most people that do it, even people that fucking drink, there's maybe some mechanism in our mind that's trying to drive us back to source. I think when I was a kid, I even thought there has to be more than this shit. There has to be more. I didn't think it like that, like linguistically, but I felt a feeling that there has to be more than this. You know, I'm being told the world is fixed this way, that way. Um, you know, I remember I watched the DMT documentary and that's when I really wanted to do this shit. I'm like, damn, I want to experience what else, what, what's beyond this. They, you know, I, I was going to church as a kid. I, you know, they talk about God, but I, I never saw any, I never experienced anything. So I, I had this urge to connect to God in a way, to source. Uh, but what I learned from these experiences, at least in the very beginning was, uh, <laughs> it was very rough. You know, if you just jump into them. You don't meditate, you eat like shit, it's going to punish you, man. Uh, maybe your experience will be good, but you're not going to learn anything, at least in that moment. Um, for example, I was smoking DMT. When I first got DMT, I smoked it every day for two weeks. Every day for two weeks. And I remember the experiences were fucking nightmarish near the end. It was, it was taunting me. It was, it was interacting with my environment. I remember one song was playing randomly on YouTube. It was called I Dare You by the XX people some band it's like i dare you it's like i just took a hit i was dancing with en this entity uh and i took another hit and it, it, it sat me out of my fucking body and showed me this weird shit it scared me and it made me feel like i was the most insignificant thing on the planet i was a fucking egg uh and I, I wasn't respecting it i had no honor in myself i didn't respect myself i was just putting anything in my body and looking back at it it was just you know not I guess like let go of the self-importance and have respect towards the things you do, which is also what I learned on shrooms. I started learning Wim Hof. I was getting a little cocky. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could stand outside barefoot naked in, in the snow, you know, which, which I can, but I can't do it forever. I remember in shrooms I was doing, I didn't eat all day. I, I went outside. I was barefoot in the snow and my body, I was, I was dehydrated. I didn't eat. And I was out in the snow and I was like, and I started looking at the trees and the wildlife. And I, I just remember the message I was getting from the plant and from the environment, you know, which is a little dark. Uh, it's not like dark in the sense like, oh, it's benevolent, it's trying to hurt me, but it's more like we're more powerful than you. Don't think you can handle everything because you fucking can't. Your body has limits. Mm, There's people yeah. all around you. If you mistreat them, they could, you know, they could do whatever they want. So have a respect when you approach something 
and honor yourself and honor other people and honor the environment that you're in and not try to act like even now, now, now since I know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm not picking fights with fucking people. That's fucking crazy. Even if I, if, even if I could beat them or whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You have to have a respect towards things. Is there's always a hierarchy, and you have to honor that and respect it. You know, there are people who've earned their position. People were burnt, born, born with certain talents, maybe because of their their uh, ancestral, you know, passing through their DNA. So. Hey, that's something I learned, but it wasn't like, I knew I was okay. I knew I was protected by this intelligence, but it's just a reminder, like, hey, come to things with the level of respect, humility. Jiu-Jitsu taught me a lot of that, too. Yeah, we can talk about that, man, because actually, yeah, you're, that's exactly the, the next point that I wanted to bring up. But first, I want to, you know, make a, a little disclaimer. People need to know and they need to understand what psychedelics are, right? Because I think a lot of people are scared of it. And it's nothing to be scared of. I mean, you didn't die. You're still here. And you were doing exactly the I opposite. I was going to die. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. Well, actually, in a way, you did. In a way, in you a way did, did, right? In right. a way. Right. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, right? People are like, oh, no, my God. And oh, my God, let me, please, God. And it's just very strict, very, you know, like, wind up and shit. But <laughs> I think that's amazing. But you have a, a tremendous amount of courage. You have huge balls, man, to do what you did. God damn. Because, you know, I had... Uh, training in shamanism shamanic practitioners and all that shit taught me how to approach the medicine and god damn i think that i've had some pretty fucked up experiences but i think the way you did it whew, you just literally downloaded a whole fucking cosmos into your fucking self <laughs> it's like god damn and it's amazing man it's amazing so psychedelics are i think the root of the word the etymology of it comes from of course from latin and it, I, i'm probably misquoting it you got to do your own research but it comes from um do you know what it means i think it, it no, means I have no idea. knowing knowing your soul or something like that or reconnecting with your soul i'm probably misquoting it but it has to do something with reconnecting with your soul or knowing your soul getting to know to your soul right. Just google it literally you can google it and it's pretty amazing so there, there's nothing to be scared of but the way that you mention it to be respectful of not just the medicine, the plant medicine, or the, mu the mushrooms or the DMT or the ayahuasca or whatever, to be respectful of yourself, basically, right? It's to be respectful of you and to be connected and centered in you, to be like, hey, man, I'm going to do this because I love myself because this is going to connect me more to myself and to my higher self, right? So this, that's amazing. So talking about that and what it taught you, the humility, that's a word that I fucking hate. But I understand the meaning behind it, right? The word itself, I fucking hate it, man. And I had a lot of issue with, with humility. You probably understand me. Because I hate the fact that I need, I'm need i less than anybody else, right? But through experiences like you had, not only in spirituality with the mushrooms and with the entities and dancing with them. Which, by the way, I know you've had probably more experiences, but, you know. Yeah. People I'm need to pay to hear those yeah. experiences, man. Yeah. I mean, come on, because you have some pretty amazing experiences, bro. I know you're full of them. Uh, but and now transforming it also into the physical things with the humility of, you know, I want to beat the shit out of you. But, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I'm going to choke the shit out of you. And it doesn't matter if you're stronger than me. It doesn't matter if you're bigger than me. If I know the correct technique, I'm going to choke you. That's it. Simple as that. It doesn't matter about how, how big you are or whatever. So... Can you talk a little bit more of that on, on the idea? Because I know that for a lot of people, it's, it's like contradiction. To understand and love yourself and connect to yourself to realize that you matter. But at the same time, the contradiction comes in, you ain't shit. Right? Stop thinking that you're bigger than everybody else. Because I think that in the pursuit of that goal, success, because you know that you're, I'm the big human and I'm the shit. We're destroying ourselves and we're destroying the world, right? So that's my, my take on it. But I want to I hear more about that with you, man, because I, I think you, you paid your dues when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, shit, man. Uh, <laughs> that's a loaded question. But in terms of Brazilian jiu-jitsu and what it teaches me with, like, respecting others, it, it involves, like, 
like what psychedelics do, a process of destroying the self. You have to recognize that you actually need experience and time in a profession. I couldn't see that in communication, pickup artistry, sales, anything I did, even in wrestling, I relied a lot on talent. But with jujitsu, it's such a specific, such an intricate game. It's like chess, physical chess, that if you don't know anything, the truth is revealed on the mat. Whether you think you're good or not doesn't fucking matter. It's, it's going to reveal itself on the mat. So it's a very sobering experience. But I guess for approaching life from a, not, not that I'm not shit. I, I am literally everything. Not me, but like I'm connected to everything. And it's expressing itself through me. But I recognize and honor and respect other people's experiences and even talents. If there's, if there's someone at six, seven, I'm not going to go to them thinking I can beat them. They, you know, if it's on a street, you know, that's still very risky. That's that there's concrete and shit. So I honor where people are at. Not that there's this constant threat. I think jujitsu has also taught me how to be calm. I'm actually the most peaceful I've ever been when I'm out in public. Cause it's like, you let go of this energy, this anxious energy that I, it's a survival mechanism where you're not really secure in yourself. That's that's what I feel. Like when you don't know how to really defend yourself, you don't you don't have a weapon or you don't you don't know how to defend yourself. There's this underlying security insecurity that's within all of us. And I think once you start fighting, it's it's such a primal thing. Uh, connecting back to the chakras and there's the root all the way to the crown. You have to start from the root, no matter what. I I, I remember doing the opposite. I was fucking meditating two hours a day opening my fucking third eye which i did for moments man but if you're not ready for it and you don't have any sense of self you have no sense of separation you know because yes we're all connected but you know like i i'm still separated from my bed at least in this experience i have to appreciate myself and my experiences and what i have to offer because it's through my individual experience that i offer to the world which is myself um but yeah, I, I think jujitsu and martial arts is such a, a, a beautiful thing and it really destroys the, the sense of self. And you, I don't think anybody can jump into it. Like if you're like 15 years old, you might not have the maturity for it, but if you're like 20, 18 and you really come into it and recognize, all right, like all right, I, I want you to go in with an ego because then it's going to get destroyed. But you're going to leave thinking, damn, you know, like if I put in the effort, if I put in the time, I can do what they did to me in six months. You know, like I could truly see change. And then through that, you, you build confidence because it's like, oh, I'm actually getting good at something. I could get good at anything, you know, and it, and it doesn't lie because now I can, I can beat people I couldn't beat three months ago. Yeah. So it's such a, a sobering experience. I don't know how to explain it. That's the but word. I, I didn't explain yeah. it, but it's, it's very... Yeah. I love it, man. I, I fucking love jiu-jitsu. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. And you can actually translate this into any aspect of life. Everything that you just said, in my mind, I'm picturing like, God damn, this could be applied to everything in life. Relationships, uh, business, just basically everything. And that's, that, I think that's very beautiful. It's an eye-opening experience. And I'm very glad that you're sharing it with us, man, because it's, it's something that, you know, you have that, again, that ability to help a lot of people. And I'm actually very excited to see you continue evolving, can continue to see you shine. Because I'm excited on, on, on what's going to happen, man. I mean, shit. If you keep doing what you're doing, damn. This is just, Crazy this shit, man. Exciting. It's fucking exciting. <laughs> it is. Now, um, let's, I mean, to begin to wrap it up, maybe we can talk about a little bit on what else did you want? I want to talk about something else with you. True nature. Yeah. yeah. What, what, did you, what did you say? True nature. True nature. True um, nature. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to add something onto it. The yeah. No. Bring true nature up. Yeah. So the reason I bring up true nature is because, uh, you know, I knew, for example, if you guys know me, I was in real estate. I was in there for fucking two years. If you know me personally, you know, I was fucking working my ass off. I climbed myself at least up the ranks in the hierarchy I was in, at least with Brian and Modern Success, there's a reason I was picked uh, to work with. And I do have a little sense of pride there. Um, 
But I knew deep down from the beginning, I was only doing it for the fucking money. And I didn't fucking like it. I fucking hated it. I hated putting a fucking facade for people, selling people shit I didn't believe in. You know, I, I hardly at times understood what I was doing. And I bring up true nature because even as a kid, I loved performing. I loved speaking. I loved dancing. I love uh, wrestling with people. I, I always knew what I enjoyed. I love massaging people. I love healing people. I love all this shit. And I know it. Like, we all know who the fuck we are. We all have these inclinations. We all know who our true, what our true nature is. So when, you know, to jump into Team BC, when I was working with Brian, when I, when I got kicked out of the team, I, I was at the office, uh, you know, I found myself in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And that's the first decision I ever made that I started following my true nature. It's like, this is something I wanted to do. So I was wrestling in high school and I didn't pursue it because, oh, how am I going to make the money? Oh, one out of a million people become a fucking professional athlete. But once I started doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I knew no matter what the fucking obstacles are for Brazilian jiu-jitsu, there's a level of fucking energy it gives me. Like, yes, it gets fucking hard. For example, last week before my competition, I injured my back. I thought I was fucked. You know, I, I pretty much went with an injury. And I still, I still placed third. But yeah, And you still won. Yeah, I still won. But the reason I was able to do that, if it was real estate and I injured my leg, oh, I'm not going to do it. Not. I fucking hate that shit. It was giving me no energy. But what for Brazilian jiu-jitsu, for massage, or if it's fucking giving a speech like I am now, like you can see the passion I have for this shit. It, it doesn't suck so much when I get energy from it. And it's because I'm following my true nature. And when you follow your true nature, you're going to be happier and be able to give the people more. Because now when I come to my family, when I'm home, I'm more present with them. I'm not stressing out. Before when I was in real estate, I wasn't present with my girlfriend. I wasn't present with my fucking family. I would fucking meet people and it was always like, give or take, like, what, what can I get from you? So I was in this constant survival of being stressed the fuck out. So the, the biggest thing I could recommend to anybody, even if you're that, you know, that person eating fucking chips on the fucking couch, maybe you're like that because you're not fucking listening to yourself and you're not connected to who the fuck you are. So I, I would say follow your true nature. Maybe you can't fucking quit your job, but you like to dance. You like to sing. You like to, you like to build fucking boxes. Who fucking knows? Start doing it because it's going to start giving you energy and life is hard. You're constantly getting fucking pounded by life. I'm not going to say there's constant challenge, but that's what makes it exciting. And you need something that gives you that energy back that gives you that. For example, in jujitsu, my last round to get third place, I was in a choke, bro. This guy had the choke. I was blurring vision. I was like, I'm probably going to fall asleep, but I'm not going to fucking stop because I'm going to get, I'm going to do my best. If this was any, any, any other thing or I didn't like it, I would have just quit. But I fucking get, got my hand under his arm, put it in his fucking neck and pushed myself out and got third place because I got so much energy from that shit. And that, that, that passion, that energy is what, what I'm talking about. Like, damn, like follow your true nature, man. I, I heard this from a month too, but the more I listen to myself, the more opportunities I make the more people I meet that benefit me and I benefit them, the more doors that open to me. And it's like, damn, you know, like, fuck, like, it's not just about the money, man. It really isn't. And if you're really meant to have money, do what you love. It will find its way to you. I really believe that. Fuck, that's what's up. It's a fucking amazing, man. That's so true. I want to talk about something, something similar to that, but you just mentioned it. It's beautiful. I think, You're doing an honor, an, a, a, an honor to yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're doing something not just for yourself, but it's actually a benefit for the entire world. We need more people like that. We need more people like you, right? Because it's going to benefit the entire world, right? Because when, you have the, when, you're, when you're connected with your true self like the way you are, and you just mentioned it, which is beautiful, true nature, follow your true nature. You just said, man, deep inside of us, I think all of us know what the fuck we need to do. All of us. We all we really do know what we need to do, right? I don't know what the fuck's happening, man? You have a baby in there? Shit, yeah. <laughs> uh, we already know what, what, what we need to do. Deep inside of us, we already know. 
But we have all these opinions with this, that, oh man, should I do it like this? The overthinking, a lot of bullshit, a lot of bullshit, like mental constipation. And you just mentioned, and it's so beautiful, the more you follow your true nature, the better things will show up, you know, your, your purpose will show up. And I wanted to mention that, that it's for the benefit of, of the collective. Because I know that you want me to succeed more. I want you to succeed more. And we're not competing with each other. We are benefiting. We're bringing the entire collective to the next stage. You know, we're uplifting the energy, the, the consciousness of the collective. We're saying like, hey, guys, look at us. Look at, the, look at life. It's so beautiful. We have so much to give, so much to offer. We have so much to experience. God damn, it's so much more. Like you mentioned, it's so much more than just eating Cheetos every fucking day. So I think that's what we need. That's, what, that's exactly that which, which you have. That's exactly what we need in the world. In today's right. world, that's exactly what we need. More awakenings like the one you had and bringing each other up. Like, hey, come on, man. You want to do it? What's well, it going to cost you? Because it costs me. I know it costs you and continues to cost, to cost you a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of stuff. But the way you mention it, it's worth it. You're like, I don't give a fuck. It pays you back immediately. If it's something you love, you get that feeling. You get that feeling. And you, you get the energy. That, yeah, you, you, that, it's beautiful. You don't even know. You didn't even know that you had that that extra oomph, like, oh, do I have it? I'm gonna pass out it. Oh, you show up. That's beautiful, man. That's with anything. Like with speaking right now, I'm getting energy from it. I love speaking. Yeah. I love doing this shit. I love performing. Some people don't listen to their nature. Maybe some people are fucking doing the opposite. They're they're you know, they're 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 doing this entrepreneur shit, <laughs> doing YouTube, but they fucking they like being quiet. Maybe they should be a fucking therapist. Who fucking yeah. knows? Yeah. Um but yeah, dude, really listening to your true nature, that's that's something so key. And like you say, it's better for the collective. For me, I reached out for something I would say was pretty selfish. It's just, it's fighting. But you don't have the level of perception yet to see how it serves the collective. Through this art, at least for me, it's going to give me a lot more energy. I'm going to be more of who I am. And I'm going to live, I'm going to actually enjoy and love my life more to more. Now I'm going to reach out for other things because now I'm doing something I enjoy. Oh, what, what else can I do next? Right now I'm doing massage. Next I'm at hypnotherapy. I'm, I'm adding on YouTube. Or I'm already doing YouTube, but I'm, I'm just adding things I want to do now. And I'm, I'm really excited for what's in store for me. And I know you, you brought it up to me and I, I know people see it. Like if people, if you don't know me, you just assume I'm loaded. Like I'm at the gym. People just assume I'm loaded because I fucking live a quality life. I drink glass water. I might not have fucking money, but I live as if I do. I put all the money towards me because I love feeling healthy. I love martial arts. And I know I'm going to be where I want to be one day because I feel it. It's something in me so deep, so primal that nobody, no fucking person can tell me otherwise. Because that intelligence beating my heart that has orchestrated everything is telling me otherwise. And nobody can disturb that. So I would say true following your true nature man and sometimes you might reach out for the wrong thing i think if i didn't go into the army into real estate i might have never found it because i wouldn't have known what i didn't like i would have wouldn't have known what it's like to lose myself i wouldn't have known what it's like to give my sense of self to another person yeah. you know what i mean through losing myself i guess it was that destruction of yeah. the self i gained myself back um and i'm just excited man and the thing is, like, I'm just enjoying my day to day now. I'm not worried about 10 years from now. My life is happening right now. For example, if you watch a TV show, you're not waiting till the finale. <laughs> you know, like sometimes you are like sometimes the last episode's all awesome. But you enjoy the show one episodes one through 49, not just 50. You enjoyed the journey. You enjoyed the process. So through that, pursue what you love. Yeah, that's so true, man. It's so true. It's so true. I don't even want to add something because that's how my mind works. I'm already like, yeah, because blah, blah, blah. But just was said so beautifully that I don't want to add anything to that, man. So any final thoughts that you have, man? Any any last advice? Any, you know, golden nuggets that you have? Someone that is struggling, someone that is overthinking, someone who is maybe fat, like you mentioned, like a healthy advice, you know, with a with body or physical, their physical being or any last thoughts man i'll add something yeah um you know like 
and I'm speaking from a position not uh, where I made it. I've not arrived. I'm never going to arrive. I'm not. I'm not always perfect. There's days where I fucking don't show up. Like sometimes I don't fucking show up. Sometimes I fall flat on my fucking face and I fail. But it's through that process that you learn. You're not always going to be perfect. Just keep coming back to what it is that you want to do, that who you are. If you know something that you, if you know you need to be doing something, do it. You know, but you might fall on your ass and it's okay. If you're eating chips right now, get in a fucking ice bath. Prove to yourself that you're worth more. You're more, you're stronger than you fucking think. And I promise you, I, specifically with the ice baths and the breathing and the cold showers, if you're in there for 10 minutes and you breathe and you come out, you're going to come out a lot stronger than you were before you came in. I'd fucking recommend everybody to do an ice bath because there's a level of strength. And I want you to visualize the sun as you're doing it because that same intelligence that is generating the sun's heat is within yourself. Connect to it. Generate the heat from within yourself. Recognize that life is created within and reflects from without. But you also need the outside as well. Pursue teachers, have a humility, and do your best every day. God damn, man. This is pure fucking gold. God yeah. damn, man. This is pure fucking gold. We should be doing more of that. We'll, 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 we'll do another one. We'll probably do another one because I know people, but Circle of the Rainbow Warriors, they're going to fucking love it. This, 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 this. Uh, community that we have the small community that we have they're gonna fucking love it but uh with your permission i'm gonna use this oh, <laughs> with yeah. all my audience man because this is whatever the fuck you want you need to hear this you know you know what i'm saying people need to hear ex exactly what what you just mentioned everything that you just said man that, right. that, that's what we need so uh okay there you have it you have you i have your permission i'm gonna fucking use it i'm gonna put it everywhere <laughs> 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 fucking good. Cool. so uh, there you go man so give me just a second and the oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we have another one, man. Do you have any questions, Lisa? No, I actually logged in super late and I'm super pissed. I missed it, but um, just the little bit that I got from David, uh, it's awesome. And like, kind of like you said, Pablo, there's like really nothing to add on. I think uh, he was like, you know, head on when it comes to it takes you losing yourself to reconnect and find yourself again and figure out, you know, really what brings you joy, what you love to do. And yeah, it's so true. You won't need to be kicking yourself in the ass every day to get up and do something when you're doing something that you truly, truly love. That's true. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. Now, anybody that is going to listen to this, because we're going to put it out there for everyone to see Yeah. Just realize that whatever it is that you're experiencing right now that might be bad, just like you mentioned, Lisa, just like David mentioned, it's part of the it's, it's part of the journey. It's oh yeah. Kicking your ass, it's part of building you up. That that's how you grow up, right? That's yep. that's how you build yourself. Fucking amazing, man. I yep. and I love having us warriors. That's exactly why we named this circle of the rainbow warriors, because it has nothing to do with being gay, because <laughs> I've been getting asked that like rainbow warriors. <laughs> Are you gay, Paula? Oh, Maybe brother. a yeah. little bit sometimes. Like, I'm a little bit sassafras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay. I'm gay because I'm fucking happy. What's up? Yeah, gay? that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, we're warriors, and and that's what we need. That's what we need in today's world. Because I see the condition of the world, and you know, I'm about to have a child. You, David, you're about to have a child. You're a mother, and it's like, God damn, what the yeah. fuck am I gonna do? how the condition of the world is that what i'm going to leave behind to my child is that yeah. what i'm going to do hell no we got to do something about it right yeah. so that's that's pretty fucking amazing so thank you thank you oh thank you david thank you especially you david for for showing up for dropping some some bombs thank you Lisa, for being here as well yeah of course thank you, all. Thank you to everyone who's going to listen thank to this guys. really quick end the recording for me really quick i just want to ask something off camera you know what i'm saying all right. okay so <laughs> <laughs>